got our feature match here coming up for round number six. Exit, exit strategy. <laughs> Raphael Levy versus Shahar Shedhar. Both have five top finishes to their names. Gruel Adventures for Levy and Sultai Ultimatum for Shahar Shenhar. Let's get to meet our players a little bit better. Here's Raphael Levy. He's a member of the Hall of Fame. Says his approach to standard is, quote, Magda. All right, so that's what he's going to do. Gruel Adventures there, 62% standard win rate. Well, what about his opponent, Shahar Shenhar? He's your 2013 and 14 back-to-back -back world champion playing Sultai Ultimatum. Says his approach to standard is, quote, no one is going to play mono red, right? Well, not in this instance, Shahar. You lucked out there. <laughs> so that's our matchup. But tell us about these decks, Monty. Yeah, Raf Levy said Magda is as opposed to standard, and he wasn't kidding. He's been one of the early pioneers of this specific build of Gruel Adventures featuring the Dwarf Lord from Kaldheim. Magda is the card that Raf used to go to rank 1 Mythic on the Mythic Ladder and construct it, and this build of Gruel similar to this was how he did it. This deck is somewhat the Gruel Adventure we know and love. Ajwal Innkeeper, Bonecrusher Giant, Lustruck Beast, all there. But there's a lot of cool interactions with Magda and Jespara Sentinel happening to give you a bigger boost in mana and get the cards like Goldspan Dragon and then just do ridiculous things with the amount of mana you're able to generate. This deck is really cool. On the other side, the tried and true Sultai Ultimatum. We've seen it a few times on camera today and there's been middling results. We've already seen it lose twice in our feature match area. We did see Matt Sperling pull off a win in that last feature match we watched at the end there. But so far, the deck that has dominated kind of the metagame percentage isn't doing so well in the feature match area. But this deck is still extremely powerful. And in the past, Gruul has been historically a good matchup for Sultai. So I don't know if Shahar is too worried here. All right, well, let's take a look at our scores so far with uh, predicting who's going to win each feature match. Riley's still in the lead. Ugh, I've got to catch you. I've got to catch you. All right, who do you choose this time, Riley? I reckon I'm going to go for the two-time world champion, Shahar Shen. Uh, Raphael uh, Levy, of course, as I said many times before, he's got the heart of a champion and the spirit of a fighter. But I think, you know, Shahar Shen is just a bunch of roths, and I think he's going to win this one pretty comfortably. How about you, Mani? On the one hand, Maria, I keep choosing Sultai, and I keep getting it wrong. But on the other hand, I've never met a time walk I didn't love, so I'm going to pick Shahar. <laughs> All right. I love it. There's Shahar. Let's make it three for three. I pick Shahar as well. This deck is just super powerful. And I mean, Gruel can get out of the gates pretty quickly, but this deck is just built to smash and punish people who just aren't that fast enough. All right, let's get ready for this next round. Round number six coming up in just a couple of minutes after this messages. Don't go anywhere. Our players are prepped and ready to battle. Welcome back to coverage of the Strixhaven Championship. It is round six. We're into standard. And it is going to be Ref Levy versus Shahar Shenhar with two decks, one of which we're not too surprised to see, but the other one we haven't seen that much of at all, Cedric. No, we have not. Uh, Gruel Adventured with Magda was a deck that was a little bit popular in the Strixhaven May League weekend, but to really see it on the grand stage here is going to be of interest. I know that Raphael Levy, he loves to beat down. That's why he's one of my favorite Magic players of all time. But the Magic Hall of Famer, elected in 2006, going to be taking a different approach here this weekend as far as the beatdowns are concerned. Could be playing Mono Red, could be playing Mono White, but is going to be relying on Magda and the Adventure Mechanic, Ailey, to get the job done. We've seen this Gruul deck have super explosive starts, especially if you can pair up Aegis Spire Sentinel with a Magda Brazen Outlaw into one of the one drops in the form of an Edgewell Innkeeper or a... Uh, adventure spell, but taking a look at this opening hand, oh, it'd be so great if there was some green in there. Yeah, this is this is a little bit tough. So the way that I look at Magda and Jaspera Sentinel, and this is a weird way of explaining it, but I think it's the best way to explain it. it it's kind of this standard format's 
Birds of Paradise and Elvish Mystic or Land of War Elves or whatever mana accelerant you really want to think of. Uh, the mana engine can get out of control very, very quickly if it does get turned online. And those cards are fairly good individually, but absolutely bonkers together. So if you can put them together, you can really start to race your opponent and you know deploy your permanents before they can really do much of anything. Uh, as you mentioned with that first hand, the lack of green mana caused some problems there for Wrath. And now his hand is not really coming together all that well. As powerful as the adventure mechanic is, Ailey, um, it's not at its absolute best in this particular matchup because at the end of the day, all Shahar is trying to do is buy some time until he, revo until he resolves that seven mana sorcery and he's already got Emergent Ultimatum in his hand. <laughs> he has Ultimatum and he's got several ways to deal with these cheap little threats here. Another Heartless Act being drawn at the top and then Shadow's Verdict to follow it up when he does get to five mana, which is going to be one turn earlier thanks to this Cultivate here. So... Things looking super good for Shahar Shenhar. Unfortunately, Raph Levy not getting off to the start he wanted. Yeah, you saw Raph do a bit of a sigh there. He's missing land drops. He just has two mana three ones. That's not enough pressure against this deck, which look, it's still at 20 at this point. And Raph has been doing this whole Magic the Gathering thing for long enough to know that he's already too far behind in this game. Now, it'd be one thing, Ailey, if Shahar didn't already have the Emergent Ultimatum, um, but he actually already has it. He's building towards it. Omen of the Sea is going to get him one step closer to it. And unlike that match that we covered previously uh, with Paulo and Autumn, I actually do think it'll only take one Emergent Ultimatum to get the job done. I think I'm with you on that one, Cedric, as we're going to see Heartless Act take care of the second threat on the battlefield. There's land number three for Raph Levy in the form of Shadow Skull smashing. We're going to go to Magda here. Can she get anything done here for the Hall of Famer? Now it's one turn until it's closing time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Shahar not holding anything back, just removal after removal. There goes all the three mana spells, and Wrath Levy is left with just a Bone Crusher Giant being able to be cast from hand, drawing that Garrick Unleashed off the top of the library, and let's get salty. Here comes the Emergent Ultimatum that this deck is known and loathed for, I'm sure. I suppose we'll see All Runs Epiphany and two other cards. We'll see what those two other cards are here from Shahar. Taking a look at the deck list, I'm imagining it's going to be Kiora, Best the Sea God, and yep, there's the Valky as well. So we're all set here. There's no picking that apart here for Raph Levy, and it's going to have to be a much quicker start for Raph to actually uh, keep this one interesting. Can I just point out that this is a secret sneaky teamer deck, in actual fact. Look what we just boarded in there for Raph Levy. Two disdainful strokes. Is that perhaps a nod to the ridiculous power of the ultimatum? It absolutely is, and, and we can't forget that there are some other big spells in this Salty Ultimatum deck that are worth countering. And here's looking at you, Elder Gargroth, All Runs Epiphany, so on, and, and even Shadow's Verdict. So those are pretty sneaky, those Sustainful Strokes in the sideboard, and they can be cast off the treasure tokens that you're able to generate with Magda, uh, Jaspera Sentinel as well, and there's also those pathways that can be flipped over for blue. So, you know, you can't play a ton of them. raf has got access to two of them, but I do think it's pretty smart deck building because in some senses, I'm not going to say this completely, but in some senses, they are kind of free to include. So let's take a look at the sideboarding decisions there. We've got the Akron War to catch those big critters on Shahar's side of the battlefield. The Disdainful Strokes coming in. And on Shahar's side, it looks like we're going for the cheaper removal and the Eliminates, as well as Elspeth's Nightmare. Taking out some of the uh, more annoying cards in the Counterspells and the Duress. Yeah, Mystic Dispute, not at, not Mystical Dispute, excuse me, not at its best in this matchup. Don't really need the duress, especially when you're on the draw. Negate, not all that impressive either. And Professor Onyx is more of a card that you're looking to hit with Emergent Ultimatum. It's certainly not a card that you want to draw. So these are easy cards to sideboard out, and the Eliminates are extremely easy cards to sideboard in because you're just looking to buy time and stabilize the game until you can resolve an Ultimatum. Now, I don't expect it to always look as easy as it did that first game, but that's part of the appeal, Ailey, of playing this uh, the Salty Ultimatum deck is, you know, just buy some time, resolve Ultimatum, the game's over. It, it can be that easy, but it's not <laughs> always that easy. Yeah, we've certainly seen uh, both sides of the spectrum with this deck this weekend. You know, sometimes it takes more than two Ultimatums to get the game won, and even in that case, it might not be enough. But this opening hand looks far better for Ref Levy, but I don't think he's going to be too happy with it, as we still don't see the early action. We've got no Magda in hand, no early pressure. 
Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Raf send this one back. He's certainly thinking about it, right? Because this is just kind of slow out of the gate. Now, if you draw a two drop or a one drop as your first draw step, sure, it doesn't look so bad. But I mean, at the very least, you do have a turn two play of Stomp You and a turn three Bone Crusher into turn four Asika's Chariot. So, you know, you do have things to do up the curve, but your draw steps can also change how you're going to want to maneuver through the game. So this first draw step here for Raf is a pretty important one because you draw a card like Magda and the game changes. There's a Sentinel's not Sentinel, bad. not too bad. It's not the... It's kind of like getting Lana War Elf a little late. It's like, oh, okay, cool, fine. I'm going to play you, I guess. So that's yeah, going to hit the battlefield. Not, it's not the worst draw step, but it's not the one that you're particularly excited about either. But it is something else to do. So we'll see if Shahar wants to use an Eliminate on this or if he wants to go to Wolf Willow Haven. Uh, so he does have a little bit of options here on this particular turn. Do you want to ramp? You just want to get this thing off the battlefield. And, and truth be told, Shahar doesn't know this, but if I'm ramp, I'm actually totally good with this because that creature didn't really matter towards my game plan. And now my Bone Crusher's... I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's clear for takeoff like Rap knows that, <laughs> but it, it's something to do. Yeah, it's a threat on the battlefield, and it's one that if Shahar targets it, it's going to dome him for a couple points of damage. So certainly a decent threat to get down. Now, what I'm eyeing out and what I'm interested in is seeing the Sakroan War nab and Alder Gogoroth, because that's what I think could be the winning line for Ref Levy as this game progresses. But let's not uh, get too far ahead of ourselves here. Well, as these turns continue to unfold, I think we're going to see Shahar play a Wolf Willow Haven here. We'll see him play another one there, right? So now on Raph's turn, he'll untap, he'll draw. We'll see what the card drawn is going to be, but pretty simple turn of attack with Bonecrusher Giant, play the Asikas Chariot, and then you've got a Chrono War in the holster for the Elder Gargaroth that Raph doesn't know is coming. You and I do, along with everybody else at home. And so this is a Chrono War that you want to see take an Elder Gargaroth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to be coming up next turn there, Ailey. I am very much looking forward to that, because once you get that old Gorgoroth, you get so much value off of it. This deck doesn't draw cards at all, really. It's it's not good at that. And this old Gorgoroth, having it on the board for, for an attack, just being able to either gain a card or gain another creature on the board could be a really, really big thing here for Raph Levy. So there is the Chariot. A couple of kitty cats along the way. And Oof. now, an interesting draw there from Shahar, because it would be very easy to just slam down Elder, Elder Gargaroth, but the equation may have changed here for him because there's also the ability to play Omen of the Sea and binding the old gods, killing the chariot or something else, but it looks like he's just gonna go towards the Gargaroth. The binding the old gods is kind of an insurance policy against the Akroan War, because True. if it does get stolen, then it's just like, nope, I'm gonna take it back. But we have found a disdainful stroke which can prevent that binding. We can't do both, though, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is the rock and the hard place because Stroke is incredibly good in this matchup, but he only has access to five mana, not six. So if he had the ability to play the Akron War with Disdainful Stroke up, Wrath would be feeling fantastic about this game. So now he's got to kind of pick one or the other. And I don't really think it's much of a choice at all. I think you just got to take the Akron War. And a eh, cute little play here is if you you Akron War, you, what, you take this Gargaroth, then you can use the mm -hmm. Gargaroth to turn on the Chariot. Oh, yeah. Pretty dope. We're going to put a Gargaroth in a chariot. I don't think it fits considering it's made for cats to sit in it, but it's okay. He can at least drive it as best he can. So let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do a little rim rock, and that's four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We can get him to one. Is that what I'm counting? <laughs> that's pretty nasty. Binding might not even be useful here. Yeah, binding might not be good enough. You also get to copy a cat, so... The Akron War still aces in this spot. You're not really going to play... If you're Wrath, I don't think you're going to play around any removal. So yeah, you're just going to kind of fire off here with the Rimrock Knight. Maybe think about which creature you want to target. Um, but let's see. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so excuse me. Get you down to 2, not two. 1. But... You know what does 2 points of damage, Cedric? Uh, stomp? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and I guess also, also worth noting, too, because the Gargaroth fired up the chariot, mm -hmm. that means that if the Akron War dies, the, the Gargaroth, what, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back tapped? So, I yeah. think life is, a, I think life yeah, is life pretty is darn good. good. Levy. So much pressure so quickly with this deck. What do we draw off the top there? It's a Willful of Haven. That's not going to get the job done here for Shahar. He has a whole board of trouble. So he's got to go and find a removal spell. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what even the best find is here because you would say, you know, he needs to find a removal spell and he's already got access to a uh, binding in his hand. Oh, that swamp wipe. certainly doesn't help. Eesh, so. yep, nope. 
it it was so it wasn't the fastest of starts here for Raf Levy, right? Like he thought a little while either before keeping that hand. Yeah. And so it does beg the question now, if you're if you're Shahar, and this is very easy to do the whole hindsight twenty twenty thing, are you supposed to use an eliminate on the dress pair of Sentinel? Or are you supposed to save it for the next threat, right? Because eliminating that one two looks kind of silly when a bone crusher giant just dealt you at least eight points of damage. <laughs> but you know, again, hindsight is twenty twenty, as yeah. they say. Of course. I mean, just Ferris Sentinel, it seems a little innocuous, but it's really, really good at being able to tap Magda, get the extra treasures, and just ramp you into oblivion. But, uh, yeah, let's go to game number three here in what is turning out to be a very, very fast matchup indeed. Oh, there's the nuts. Yes, please. Well, that's, that's what Ref Levy wants to see. Well, it's the nuts on both sides here because Shahar's hand is awesome. He's got mana acceleration. He's got a Shadow's Verdict to play towards and even a Binding the Old Gods to take care of problematic non-creature permanence. So I don't know whose hand is better, but if I was forced to choose, uh, mm -hmm. here's looking at you, Shahar, because your hand is awesome. <laughs> Certainly has all the tools that he needs to keep control of this battlefield. But first things first, just going to play out Ooh. that Wolf Willow Haven okay. and a disdainful stroke. Very nice. Uh, I will say may have been best possible draw step. Maybe. Depends on what Shahar does on this turn, but uh, that was that was a pretty darn good draw there from Raph. Yeah, unfortunately he can't protect against the binding this turn. What does Shahar go for here? How much of a threat does he think this Magda is? Thinking like long this. and hard about this turn. Ooh, just getting the Yorion to hand. Okay. Okay. All right. Ref Levy is in a very good spot right now, being able to protect his board against a potential board wipe. We can see it in Shadow's Verdict there. And now let's make some treasures. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this turn is... This turn is... Dragon. Dragon with Stroke Up. Yep. Which is the nuts. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty darn good. Okay, I guess, so... yeah, yeah, this is... Raph's just got to make sure that he does it right. I think he's may, might be a... I mean, I don't want to say he's confused, but I think he just needs to make sure that he's doing everything correctly. Make sure he gets his treasure. Play your pathway. This is a turn, this. turn three yep. dragon? Yep. I mean, this is, the, this is the appeal, right? This is the entire appeal of this mm -hmm. cool adventures deck is... Not only do you have the Avengers mechanic, which is obviously powerful, I think we all know that at this point, but you also get access to this, um, which is this engine of Sentinel plus Magda, and when that is online, you are cranking out so much mana that you're able to double and triple spell. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Raf Levy could run out the Edgewell Innkeeper here, but I don't see any reason to right now, so Disdainful Stroke is just going to be kept up here to protect against a Binding or a Shadow's Verdict. Yeah, and so he's gonna he's gonna counter basically the first thing that Shahar casts. So these disdainful strokes that are pretty innocuous from the sideboard. Oh, I assume Raph's gonna counter this because this is his hand. This is really the only thing he's got going on here is this Goldspan Dragon. So we'll we'll see if he does want to counter this or not. My assumption is that he's going to. Yeah. But, I mean, this this is the appeal of this strategy that Raph is playing, and and these disdainful strokes from the sideboard they seem random in quotes. Uh, they're anything but. No, oh, it's so clever. You wanna do you wanna know something gross that I've just seen? We could make five treasures next turn with Magda. Tapping Magda, Shadow Skull Smashing. Does Shadow Skull Smashing target the, your own creatures? If it can, oh, never mind. We got Rimrock Knight. Target the dragon, make another treasure, and then go and fetch Embercleave. I don't know if that's good enough to win, but it sounds like fun. I mean, it feels good. Let's have fun. Come on. Go, Raph. Do it. Do dumb things. Oh, okay, so... I'm so excited. <laughs> so oh, we're gonna we're go. We're, we're gonna go boulder rushing. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, this is uh, I, this is lethal. I think it's I, I think it's lethal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that. You can get a card. You can make another treasure by tapping that dwarf instead. Magda will attack. Make another treasure. Dragon attacks. Makes the final treasure, and then Bob's your uncle, right? I think I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm counting now. I mean, Raph is counting, I'm counting. I want to make sure I'm not missing something. So whenever Dorothy Control becomes tap, so you tap the Rimrock with the Sentinel, that's three. Magda attacks, that's four. <laughs> Dragon is five. Yep. 
Uh, assuming he still has an Ember Cleave left. So there's there's your four treasures. Yep, yep. make another okay. one. There we go. <laughs> That's so good. Do it, do it, do it. Shahar can do nothing right now. Ref Levy is going to go I mean, and what do you mean? What do you even need me here for? You can just call this match solo. You don't need me. I'm just going to shut my mic off. This is so great. I love this. Oh, this is my favorite thing on the weekend. Is this Xaxes? Hell yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> I'm just going to take my headset off because Alias just got this all on her on her own. You saw that line like uncomfortably fast. So uh, production team in the back. It's been a pleasure. Nine years of magic no, commentary, don't but don't leave. Do we still need this. Do we still need me? Yeah, stay, please. I like having you okay. around. OK, OK, fine. Fair enough. That was well done oh, there, partner. Jeez. My goodness. You can tell I've played with that deck a bit. That's so uh, fun. Yeah, I was taking a moment there. Trying to get, maybe I should have had these on. I don't know. I was taking a moment <laughs> trying to figure out exactly. I'm like, really? If there's five, there's only one out there. But you, you found it. So uh, And so did Raph. So kudos to both of you. You both win. Yay. That was great. I enjoyed that very, very much. And I hope that we'll see much more of it. There's going to be plenty more action after this break. So don't go anywhere.